Good morning to you uh, and a happy new year. It's nice to have you here again in the year 2021. It's a blessed year indeed. Uh, we would like to share God's word with you. It's a way of preparing us for the rest of the year. Um, whatever we're going to achieve in this year, the extent to which we will rise to is dependent on greatly dependent on the things I'm going to be sharing with you this morning. So get your heart prepared, get your pen, get your paper, and uh, let's embark on this journey. Let's bow down our heads as we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your faithfulness. We bless your name for your kindness. We glorify your name for the privilege of fellowship. We glorify your name for the privilege of salvation. We thank you for we know that the light from your word floods our hearts this morning. My viewers have received understanding and the increasing knowledge in the name of Jesus. Thank you for the prosperity of your word. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. So this morning I will be sharing with us uh, on what I titled, Guarding Your Heart. Guarding Your Heart your heart. Like I said earlier, uh, the extent to which we are going to rise to is dependent on the state of our heart. So it becomes very pertinent that we guard the things we allow in our heart, the influences we allow in our heart, if we must achieve a different result this year. Now, it's possible to be born again, spirit-filled, raising the dead, casting out devils, and yet you don't get tangible results in the projects you impact on. And uh, to a greater extent, actually, it is dependent on the state of our mind. So this morning, we'll be looking at uh, certain influences that could hamper, that could stand against our pursuits, that can stand against our achieving results. Okay, now, uh, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23 says something. It says that, keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it proceeds the issues of life. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it proceeds the issues of life. Meaning that the products we're going to get in life, the results we're going to get in life, the issues that will emanate in life to a greater extent is dependent on the things we think. Praise the Lord. Bible said, as a man thinking in his heart, so he is. So the things you think, the thought pattern that flows in your mind, create an atmosphere for the events that will eventually play out. So this morning, like I said, I'm going to be pointing out certain things you should watch out in the year 2021 if you really want to get a different result. Now, the thoughts that flow in our minds are founded on, the, on certain influences certain influences that paint pictures that make resounds in our mind and if those influences are not handled definitely our thought pattern would always flow towards the negative no matter what we do no matter how we pray our thought pattern would always flow to the negative if these influences are not corrected number one of such influences is the environmental influence the environmental influence our environment the things that happen around us the things we see the things we hear uh, the things we feel you know those things that are that our, our false five senses ex are exposed to those things that our five senses are exposed to have an influence in the thought pattern that will flow in our minds and i'd like to show you something quickly act chapter 20 verse 24 act chapter 20 verse 24 Hallelujah. Acts 20, 24. And see what the Bible says in Acts 20, 24. It says that, But none of these move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy, and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of grace of God. Amen. And this was Paul speaking and he said that he does not allow external influences none of the things happening around him move him his heart is set on a goal independent on the happenings around him whether he receive appraisals or whether he receive criticism he is consistent with his mandate you know he said in some other verse of scripture he said that and no man that worried entangled himself with the affairs of this life. 
you know, the, the, the warrior, the soldier, set his eyes on the cause, on the mandate, that he may please the one who has enlisted him into the army. No, that is the life of the believer. He's not supposed to be moved by such circumstances happening around him. His eyes are supposed to be set on the goal. The moment you begin to pay attention to the things happening around you, a lot of negative emotions begin to emanate. Okay, now I want to show you something. Something else again. You know, uh, in Psalm chapter 19, verse 7, the Bible shows us clearly what our attention as believers is supposed to be focused on. Psalms chapter 19, verse 7. Psalms 19, verse 7. Psalms chapter 19, verse 7. Okay. The Bible says, The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. So the word of God has the tenacity, has the ability to convert the soul. The soul here referring to our minds. The word of God has the capacity to transform our minds. Meaning that when we focus on the word, the end result of our focusing on the word will be a transformation of our mind. The transformation of of our mind. Bible says, be you not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. So our minds can possibly be renewed. And here, David shows us in the book of Psalms how our minds can be renewed, saying that the word of God has the ability to renew our minds. Say, so the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. It converts the soul, it transforms our minds. Psalm 119, verse 30. And see what the Bible says in Psalm 119. Verse 30. Bible says, I have chosen the way of truth. Thy judgment have I laid before me. He has chosen the way of truth. His judgment is what he has laid before. You know, he has laid his heart upon. His, his judgment is what he has laid before himself. Meaning that what he stares on, what he looks at daily is the judgment of the Lord. The judgment of the Lord is referring to scripture. So he looks at the commands of the Lord, looks at the prescriptions of God, looks at the reports of God. All that he desires, all that he focuses on is the word of God. Praise the Lord. That is what he sets his eyes on. He doesn't set his eyes on the economy of the, of the nation. He doesn't set his eyes on the problem happening around him. He doesn't set his eyes on the opinion of men. He does not set his eyes on the lifestyle of men. He set his eyes, his focus on the world. Praise the Lord. So, I remember I told us some time ago that we become what we consistently do. We become what we consistently do. So if you consistently focus your attention on the Word of God, you become what the Word of God says. Praise the Lord. But when you focus on things happening around you, you will become what the things happening around you suggest. Praise the Lord. So here the psalmist says that he focuses his attention on the judgment of God, which is the Word of God. He focuses his attention on the Word of God. Praise the Lord. And in Psalm chapter uh, 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 19, Verse 7, where we're at, Bible said that the word of God converts the soul. So when you focus on the word, the result you will have is the compassion of your soul. And whatever thought pattern flows in your mind actually dictates your actions and your confession. Your actions and your confessions eventually yield the results and the experiences you will have in life. John chapter 6, verse 63. John chapter 6, verse 63. John 6, 63. See what the Bible says? It says, It is the spirit that quickened the flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. This was Jesus speaking. That the words he says to them are spirit and they are life. This shows us the, 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 the efficacy of the word of God. It is not just letter. It is spirit it is life. So when we allow the entrance of this word into us, it brings light, it brings understanding to us, it impacts life upon us. Praise the Lord. It impacts, it impacts life upon us. It is the spirit of God. It, it, it has a resonance with the spirit which is inside of us. Amen. And then our mortal bodies are quickened, our thought patterns are transformed, and we begin to walk in alignment with that which God desires of us. Okay, so remember we're talking about guarding your heart and we looked at one of the things we should guard against which is environmental influence. Another thing we should guard against is idolatry and motives. Our idol idolatry, sorry, idolatry and our motives. Praise the Lord. Now it is possible, in fact, all 
or almost all through scriptures, you see emphasis laid on motives. It is possible to do the right thing, but do it with the wrong motive. And once the motive is wrong, the result will be wrong. Praise the Lord. They get that from me. When the motive is wrong, the result will be wrong. Now, Philippians chapter 2, verse 17. Uh, I said something I would like to show you quickly. Philippians chapter 2, verse 17. Hallelujah. Philippians 2, verse 17. See what the Bible says. It says that, Yeah, and if I be offered upon the sacrifice and service of your faith, I joy, I rejoice with you all. Praise the Lord. Now, so the motive of Paul here was correct. Take note that he was willing to be offered up uh, for the sake of serving the people. His motive was serving the people. And because his motive was serving the people, the end result was going to be a fullness of joy. Would be was going to be a rejoicing. Praise the Lord. So, the sacrifices he made was not a problem. But the reason for the sacrifices was what was going to result in the joy and the rejoicing he was going to experience. The sacrifices he was going to make was for the purpose of service. Those things you want to do this new year in church, in your business, in your family, what is the motive? The joy you're going to experience after them, the result you're going to experience after them is dependent on the motives in your heart. Acts chapter 2 verse 46. A very common story I would like to show you. Acts chapter 2 verse 46. The Bible says, And they continuing daily with one accord in the temple, and breaking bread from house to house, did eat with eat their meat sorry, with gladness and singleness of heart. Praising God and having favor with all the people, and the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Praise the Lord. There was singleness of heart, the same motive, the same pursuit, common ground. And once that was established, Bible said they had a result. The result they had was an addition to the church. So there was an increase as a result of the right motive. Amen. So when we have right motives towards things, definitely we would have the right result. Praise the Lord. 1 Corinthians 13 verse 1 to 3. 1 Corinthians 13 verse 1 to 3. 1 Corinthians 13 verse 1 to 3. The Bible says, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and have not charity, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. Verse 2. And do I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge? And do I have all faith so that I can remove mountains and have not charity? I am nothing. Verse 3, the last verse. And he says, And do I bestow all my goods to feed the poor? And do I give my body to be burned and have not charity? It profits that mean nothing. So you could actually make high sacrifices, you know. Pursue big dreams, you know, adventure into great things. But once the motive is wrong, you will not get result. It's a waste of time. Praise the Lord. In the scripture, what we just read in 1 Corinthians 13, it said that even though I make sacrifices, you know, even though, you know, I, I, I bestow my goods to the poor, which are good deeds, but once the motive is wrong, you cannot achieve adequate or proper results. You cannot achieve proper results. Ezekiel 14, verse 1 to 3. The Bible speaks about certain group of elders who came to seek the face of God. They came to worship. They came to inquire of the Lord. But Bible said they had idols in their hearts. They had idols in their heart. These idols refer to their motive. Their motive for coming to worship was wrong. And God spoke to the prophet and asked them to go away because their motives were wrong. How can they come to inquire of the Lord and then their attention, their motives are wrong? Praise the Lord. You can read that later on at your spare time. Ezekiel chapter 14 verse 1 to 3. The Bible speaks about motive. So you see from the list of scriptures I've given you that motive plays a vital role in the result we will actually achieve. You can actually spend so much energy doing a lot of things and yet uh, you don't get the result because your motive is wrong. Your motive is wrong. Now, uh, uh, for the sake of time, there are a lot of other things I wanted to share with us, but I'm going to stop here for today. Amen. So, uh, I'll do a summary quickly of the things I have said today. Number one, I said you should guard the things you listen to, your environment. 
Be careful of what gets into you because what gets into you eventually builds an ideology, builds a perception, builds a mindset which will eventually affect your actions and your profession. Your actions and your profession eventually affect the results and the issues that will happen in your life. I also talked about idolatry and motives. That you should guard your motive, guard your motive. If you're doing anything, do it with the right motive. When you do things with the right motives, you will get the right result. And we saw quite uh, through a lot of scriptures how motives played a vital role in the results people eventually, uh, eventually got. Praise the Lord. So that ambition, that target you have for the year, why do you want to achieve those things? Is it because you want to outdo others or because you want to have the capacity to suppress others or because you want to show up? Why do you want to do those things you want to do? Is it for the quest of power or money or fame? What is the reason? Once the motive is right, the result would be right. So I plead with you this morning that you go over your ambitions, go over your pursuit, go over the things you desire to achieve this year and make sure you're pursuing those things with the right motives and make sure you keep your environment healthy. Your environment includes your friends, the things happening around you, the places you go to, the things you listen to, the things you watch. Make sure you check them and make sure they are healthy so that your thoughts and your desires, your motives will also be healthy. I hope this blessed you this morning and uh, I look forward to, to seeing you or having you around in our next uh, session. For the meantime, I would like to pray with you. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for the light of your word that has come forth unto us. Thank you for the things you've said for us this morning. We know that, Lord, we have received understanding and we are corrected in righteousness in the name of Jesus. Thank you very much for listening to us. We hope to have you again next time. God bless you.